at it has a safe marking on it, lined up with like a little stroke below it. It's actually in the safe position at the moment. Come around to the right, see a series of numbers. That's all a part of the arming device. It's uh, been done in seconds. So for every second that that uh, arrow is lined up with these numbers is how long it'll take for the uh, fuse is armed. It's a powder burn fuse, so it has like a, a ring inside of it of powder. And uh, when you line the numbers up with that arrow, it will be how much of that powder will actually burn before it uh, is actually armed. Around the back here has a date on it. It was actually made in the 3rd of 39. Uh, it's a four inch cartridge. Uh, yeah, four inch cartridge from the, the gun on board. Uh, this was just a lucky find. It was underneath the torpedo. And as you can see, it's been well protected underneath there. And uh, we'll be blowing these up this afternoon along with the projectiles, the four inch projectiles we can't get out of the uh, wreck because they're fused into the wreck. Five, ten, ten minutes. Explosive. -oo. So you stay behind the car? Yes. Yeah, safe. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There'll be two explosions, one where the five projectiles, because they're fairly close together, and the other where the fuses were located in three boxes. Uh, these are minimal charge in them, and they'll just be made safe. There's only a small amount of explosive being used here, but because it's shallow water, we'll expect to see uh, quite a plume from the explosion. This is going to be uh, short and sweet. I'll just go the divers get a final brief on this morning's torpedo blast. This time, there'll be more than the locals watching them. Their Commodore is flying in from Dili with an entourage. If there's no questions, uh, let's roll. Right. Three days? No, six days. Six days. Six days. Since Sunday. It's a six day. There's time for the Commodore to have a snorkel on the wreck before the divers prep the blast. 
been hot, it's been good, good yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Right. Right. Have that too. Yep. Snorkel there as well, so you get a mask. This is the Snorkel. stuff you guys wear to nightclubs, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, you've heard. <laughs> <laughs> what was the other set? Uh, other set. Is that all red? That's like that. see a ship there, um, big propellers sticking out like gravestones, boilers, uh, lots of pipe work, lots of cables, you can see the anchor, you can see the gun. Uh, it's a tremendous uh, experience to be able to go out and uh, have a look at it. This diver's doing a tremendous job. I mean, this is a bit of a bonus to be able to come down and do this. Their main task is, you know, clearing harbours, like clearing dilly and things like that, doing beach surveys, making sure that our landing ships can get in. So to be able to come down here and do something as worthwhile this is, is a bonus. The divers have gone out to lay the charges and prep the blast. Roger, four minutes. Two, dive two minutes to run, over. Roger, two. Two, dive boat, 30 seconds to run. Roger, 30. Five, three, two, one. Time, plus one. That's disappointing. We've got to wait 30 minutes uh, for a misfire procedure. Uh, that they'll come, then come in and investigate what's happened. Uh, there's been no charge in the red cord at all, so the, uh, more than likely the problem's actually in the firing train. There's been some water ingress to the safety fuse, so we'll investigate that and then have to uh, cut another firing train up and try again. Problems happen. They'll fix it very quickly and we'll have another bang in maybe 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, it's always disappointing if something, something like this happens. Uh, especially with all the, uh, all the hierarchy, all the head shit around. It's quite amusing, actually. Murphy's all right. Oh, no, nothing to be disappointed about. We'll get it this time. Uh, uh, shit happens. Well, Let's get it fixed and... Uh, yeah, yeah, it will be. We'll just 20 past? You. 20 past the latest here, hopefully. All right, good. Don't you ever slag me off about <laughs> pulling the boat, <laughs> <Come> on, <Mel. laughs> um, Did you go and uh, sabotage our safety fuse at all? Did you don't be funny. Uh, we'll just... Uh, doing a 30 centimetre piece of safety fuse, and that gives us our burn rate. 41 and a half. 41 and a half. Times eight. Uh, and then we can work out the, the time required. 60. Five and a half minutes. Watch your backs, creeping dead. Don't worry about it. Make it work the second time. Yeah. Uh, if one of you stay down there, make sure it works. Yeah, we'll hold on to it, too. Explosion take two. Yeah, we'll hold on to it, too. Explosion take two. Roger, we've just connected up. Uh, permission to put fire on. Stand by. Sentry one, HQ. Sentry one. Is your range clear? All clear, visual. Roger. Dive boat, HQ. Dive boat. Approve, put fire on. Roger, put fire on. Roger, two. Yeah, well done. 
Well done. Circumstances? Not quite as good as New Year's Eve in Sydney, but pretty close. <laughs> well, we better grab our weapons and okay, yeah. head back to the um, helicopter. Okay. While the Commodore and his entourage head back to Dili, the divers check the shot to ensure the torpedo has been destroyed. I told you we'd get it. Yeah, good. Actually, Jimmy, you got a bit off it. Out of the torpedo itself, probably something to do with the uh, engine on it, the drive motor. Still see quite a bit of it. You see the uh, drive shaft, a lot of the gearing. Uh, yeah. And Jimmy's old man gets a paperweight. Ah. Just uh, found dinner out there. Funny that. You do need to grab out that firing plane, mate. Yeah. Cut the safety fuse, and it looks like that's burnt nearly all the way. What I assume has happened is in between the crimps that actually joins the safety fuse to the detonator. We've had a bit of channeling and water has ingressed into both the detonators. Um, normally we should have uh, some type of, like even like a Play-Doh, which you go and put up around here, just to go and stop the water ingress. Um, that didn't happen, that's probably why we had our, our misfire. But anyway, she went up all right after the second one, so not a problem. We'll dispose of these with our next bang. What we've got in here, it's time to get lunch ready. Always been working all day, so they'll be pretty hungry. Tucker's kept in these uh, silver sachets here. It's printed on what's in here. This one is uh, spaghetti and meatballs. Not a bad choice. Leave it out in the sun, and the sun heat it inside there, and then it's uh, time to hook in. But you can also eat them cold. <laughs> then there's the little plucky packs inside there. You got some array of different sauces, some butter. You've got your Fred to open up different cans which are inside there. They call it Fred because uh, it's a fucking ridiculous eating device. I didn't name it, obviously. We've got all your jams, Vegemite, mustard sachets, different jam, a bit of uh, shitter paper, Army's uh, chocolate rations. They're not too bad. They're water-based so they don't melt. We've also got shortbread biscuits. We've also got uh, condensed milk in there, which is personally my favourite. Smash a bit of that down your head. They can't leave that lying around too long, otherwise I get it. And uh, muesli bars. And that's basically the whole ration kit. I spent the last five blokes one day. They also come in single man ration packs, which you carry on yourself. But yeah, it's time to leave them out and get lunch going. All right, men, uh, as we know, everything, uh, about that whole evolution on torpedo went smooth as silk until uh, this morning when we had a bit of a misfire, but it happens to the best of us. And uh, we jumped back on the bike and uh, made up another firing train and away we went. Uh, went off on time the second time and uh, it was a good effort all around, I thought. Thanks very much. The Commodore sends his regards and uh, he's very impressed with it. We'd just like to thank them all for not bringing any food out as well. Uh, <laughs> where was that? The Rat Pack uh, chicken and veggies and some peas. Have a Jeez, go at that. that. All the food groups are represented. Mm. Very nutritious. Oh, have a go at oh, that. Uh, who's told the tooth about this? I'm not just going all veg, I think. Some peas and carrots, some corn. Yeah, do me. No fresh food, but the Commodore's visit did mean a mail delivery. Pretty good, bit of a uh, few birthday cards, a bit late, but you get that. No, just a bit of a uh, few uh, new newspaper cuttings from back home. My wife sent me uh, some photos of the little bloke. How long is it since you've seen him? With his ass hanging out. <laughs> good read. Take out for another scurf, for the early morning glass. 
So there we go, see if we can do some damage. <laughs> So it was 58, 59 years since the Voyager actually beached and with the, uh, the charges they placed on it, the bombing run and the time and people that have been around, I'd say a lot of that treasure would have gone. In the last week we've done over 3,000 minutes diving. We've, we've removed one torpedo, 10 depth charges and 15 projectiles. All those have been successfully removed and detonated out to sea and the wreck now is a little bit safer. There's still a possibility that there are some cartridges and projectiles underneath the sand, uh, but from what we've uh, been given from the two surveys, uh, we've removed that ordnance. Uh, let's see if we're impressive in life. Huh? <laughs> I wonder if he was done. They fucking hurt, man. Yeah, fucking no. pulse, man, or what? Can we get a pulse? This pulse? Yeah, 100 beats a minute. 100, 100, mate. 100 beats a minute. Fuck Jake, you're pumping, mate. Can you just put your freezing back? Still localised? No, it's spreading. Spreading? Out around about here now. Okay. Have you got Good through to the, the dome, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Discomfort. Pain and the pain is spreading. We don't have we don't have any ice because we are uh, self-sufficient here. Uh, we can probably the best we can do is. That's right. Yes, that's right. Uh, we've got him elevated at the moment uh, on a stretcher, and we've got oxygen uh, standing by. Yeah, we put um, a cold compress over the top of a wetted yeah, aspirin. At the moment, we've got a cold cold compress over the. I will do. Thanks very much. Didn't buy a fucking scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, it was in the rules. He's going down again. Yeah. And yep. uh, just monitor his heart rate. He's breathing over the next half an hour. Yeah. Uh, they said the scorpions in the area uh, cause a pain, a localised pain, yeah. constrictions of the chest, uh, increased heart rate, or any other problems. Then we're to call them back immediately. Pulse come right down. Yeah, it was a hundred to start with. Yeah, I picked up the suit, sort of jumped on me and ran around the back of me, didn't know what it was. Then it came around the front, I went to flick it off, but it but he latched its tail into me. Went around the back, I flicked it off and it really landed on old Red's leg and did a bit of circle bit of a circle around his leg and then jumped on the ground and ran away. That's where he was living. Hoping to get his family and kids. Revenge is the best medicine. <laughs> and so are some strong painkillers. It's not long before Jake is up and about and helping lift and shift camp for their departure today. Look at that, hey, 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 hang on. Uh, it was a good way to actually finish our, our tour in, in Dili, in um, East Timor, so... Uh, but now we're looking forward to going home. That's right. Seven days to go. Yeah. And we're home. Counting down. In the motel room in Darwin. <laughs> Jake still might die. Nine days we'll be home. <laughs> <laughs> Seven more days. It was Jake. good he got unless, bitten by a scorpion. Unless Jake gets bitten by something else. Yes. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's still pretty sore. Yeah. No one cares. No one cares. No one cares. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was good fun though. So we get to know the boys and that. Close bonds are formed and you get friends for life, so it's good, yeah. I mean, I'm in no great rush to go home. There's nothing, there's nothing drawing me back that much. You have a very good camaraderie and that's the reason a lot of people do stay in because, you know, you're great friends with everyone and you have a good time wherever you go. Home sweet home. Not too much of the time. Uh, getting back to a normal life with a, with a wife and kids 
uh, back to work for a week or two, then I'm going to take a month off and spend the holiday up the uh, Gold Coast that we were going to have over Christmas, but we missed it. I'm looking forward to going home to see my wife and son. It's been three months, and in that time I've missed our wedding anniversary, my son's birthday, my birthday, our Christmas and New Year, and my son's learned to walk in the time that I've been away, and I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing him again. Well, every time you go for a dive, you're, you've always got someone who's looking after your back. So everyone knows that if they screw up, that it could be the other person's life. I've only got another three and a half months left in the service. Well, I think there can be a bigger and better world out there. I've got a wife and a couple of kids, so I think it's about time to spend some time with them. I would probably have to be the highlight of the trip. There's been a lot of demolitions and just the history of diving on the Voyager. Not many people have dived there, and even touched it in the last 58 years, and we're the first, so it's been great. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is what, make, this is what makes it all uh, worthwhile. You get out and do jobs like this, it combines all the different skills. Trips like this, uh, you tend to get go through the full range of emotions and the boys are you know, shitty with each other one minute and then uh, best mates the next, but that happens I think in any environment. Yeah, it's been a good time, I wouldn't mind doing another three months. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been good and uh, life's pretty simple, you know, someone feeds you, someone tells you again what to do, you don't have to go too far to go to sleep. <laughs> uh, there's, been, there's been a wide variety of jobs which has been good, every day is different, pretty much so. so uh, Time's gone really fast, so it hasn't really worried me, but of course it's always good to go back to Australia because it's the best place in the world. Yeah, I was just casually looking out the window and I heard these screams, don't move, don't move. So I, of course, looking around, I'm thinking, who's he talking to? And then Ed's grabbed my arm and looked down, there's this, this huge scorpion was on my arm. And then uh, Shell's come to the rescue and knocked him off. After he took his time, that is. Yeah. Yeah. Victor would have been victim number two. That's what you have to try. Yeah! <laughs> Take that!